Hello everyone, Donna Don here with the next uh, progress report on my workhorse air. Um, last video I was struggling with the uh, gear, gear doors, assembling all that good stuff. Uh, so the problem I was running into was the scissors with the toe in, toe out. Uh, Having to reverse the scissor assemblies to get them to clear more, they had to be pointed more out than in. Because when the wheel rotates up, that scissor assembly you see right there this thing would hit that door this inside door I believe but anyway, yeah the inside door uh, but those scissors are offset more that way because that wheel rotates up this rotates around and points down once it's up in there and it was hitting the door so I flipped them over but then it caused a toe in because the bottom link I believe is the one that has a one degree offset in it so by just uh, flipping them around, it changed the offset, and then you had to flip them upside down, reverse them, and now now that one works fine. As you can see, I got a little laser dot right there if it'll focus. Let me back up here. All right, see that little laser dot? That's coming from this little gizmo right here. This is my. Uh, culminator, mirror culminator uh, laser assembly I built for a, a scope I made, a telescope. <clears throat> so it's been zeroed with a little laser in it. And I made this little adapter here out of a piece of inch and a quarter OD, um, one inch ID, and then there's, or three quarter, yeah, one inch OD. And then I got a piece of one inch ID in here as well. And it steps down to three quarter inch, and then on the inside of that is a piece of three quarter inch tubing. So that is right in the center line of the strut, or the wheel. And you can see where it's hitting right there. And what I'm after is, uh, I was looking for about an inch, just a little under an inch and 3 16 would give me a degree of toe out. So then you take it out of this one, this side. Sorry folks. <laughs> take it out of this side. In there and that's what we got. See the little laser dot, and that's where you view it when you're collimating. The laser bounces back and hits that little uh, 45 degree taper in there. And the idea is you adjust the mirrors until that laser goes right back in that center hole because it's going through and bouncing off the eyepiece mirror down to the big mirror and then back. And if the dot ends up hitting anywhere in that disc you got to adjust the mirrors until that dot goes right back in the hole it came out of and then your mirrors are aligned. So that's what I used to set up the toe in. Uh, the problem I had on this side, let me turn this laser off, just pulls out of here like so. And then I got this little knob here. Unscrew that little knob and she's off. So that's the little gizmo I made. And that was a lot easier than coming out here with the lasers and levels and everything. But I got this one working. Remember last week I said it was towed in. Uh, I had to flip the scissors over and turn them inside out. But um, again, this is offset more that way. It's not in the center of the landing gears, but on this edge here. It's about the center of the gear is the outside of this. So this is offset 3 eighths of an inch. That's at least 3 eighths inch thick. So <clears throat> when I had it hooked on there, uh, this one was down here, this one was up here, and it was causing the opposite of a toe in. But I just had to flip them over. Um, <clears throat> but I ended up bringing this gear out again to where it was straight 90 degrees to the center line of the plane. So this is now at 90 degrees. If you measure off of the face of my propeller here, set up the protractor there, put it on the gear, they're the same because this engine is center line thrust right down the center line of the aircraft. So the tow ends are done. Uh, so the last thing I've been working on, because I had adjusted these gears out, that was with these rod ends here, I had to screw them out. This side I had to go like two, three turns. That side was three or four turns. One was like one more full turn out than the other. But they're both perfectly in line with each other. And that caused some retract issues with hitting the switches now because these won't go back up in far enough. So I had to readjust the switches to get it to tuck in that last uh, one degree. Okay, and then the last problem I run into was this inner gear door, the pushrod assembly here, 
was offset to the front of the arm that pulls them push pulls it up and down <clears throat> Make sure it's all we, but uh, it was this side of the arm up inside and that one over there it's on the back side so what was happening was this little arm was going up and hitting the cross tube that turns this toggle assembly and it was hitting it just at the very end of the stroke and not allowing this door to close all the way so what I had to do here you can see these holes I had to put drill out these four two in the front two in the middle and then move the brackets back you know about a half an inch and then put that arm on the back side of the upper arm and then repin it and I used some uh, cheap rivets just to get it back together uh, I've got better ones at home I'll come back and replace those but now it seemed to take care of it it still wants to kind of stop almost about an inch shy but as soon as you touch it it falls right in place so that's going to do it and then another problem I found from all my taxi testing that everybody's so upset about oh you're just taxiing taxiing uh, my wheels over time the bearings seated in are a little better or something there's a rubber seal on here that seals these Timken bearings and it spins with the tire and that little bit of rubber coating had kind of burned off and it caused the wheel to come loose so the wheels had play in them so I had to unpin them I need to put longer cotters in uh, those are what I had uh, and then I had to fiddle around with a nut to get it to get a new cotter pin in there but I had to turn this one a good half a turn so like four holes and that one there was about the same two three or four holes I had to turn that one in so now they're now they're tight again all right I got the fuel tank in it's all hooked back up fuel lines are tied in the fuel sending unit fuel pump wires are all tied in so Got everything buttoned up. Uh, another problem I ran into with adjusting the gear is it's hitting this screw. So I gotta do something with this screw. The linkage is coming up and hitting that screw on both sides. All right, I'm turning on. See my three greens. We're gonna go ahead and swing this gear one more time. You can see that right side still wants to drop and stop a little shy. There, it's hanging a little bit. But I think once it's running, I mean, that's all it takes. Just a touch. And I ended up having to trim trim this panel to get these clear. This one's still got just the corner barely touching. But, I mean, that's it. I mean, they're, they're up in tight. But that one, for some reason, just does not want to pull tight. It may need just a hair more adjustment on the rods to pull it up, but... Right now, that's going to do it for today, folks. I've had enough. So, let me set this up for you like I did last time. I was down here Saturday for a good four or five hours fiddling with all this stuff, and I thought for sure as hell I was going to have to pull the bottom section of those legs off take them home, cut off that bung that those scissors attach to, twist them around a little bit and weld them back in in order to reset the axle. But I got lucky. I mean, they're only about a half a degree of toe out, but there's enough play in that gear that once it starts rolling, they're going to pull toe out a little more. So that should be fine. We'll find out, but it's basically ready to start taxiing and taxi and testing again. So let me drop this down for you. Right wheel still likes to kind of touch the ground. This this uh, jack creeps on me down a little bit over time. Um, and another thing I uh, mentioned before is I ordered a set of uh, solenoid coils to replace the solenoids on the hydraulic valves that have to open and let the fluid return to the reservoir. So those are behind the seat, so I had to pull them out, wire in the new ones. The new ones were only a one inch tall, the old ones were inch and a half tall, they use a half inch stem, so they fit fine. Well these new ones are from uh, NOS, Nitrous Oxide Systems. They're a three, they pull 2.8 amps is what to say, so about three amps. The old ones only pull 
less than an amp, they're 11 watts. So these things are like 36 watts. So they have three times the um, magnetical energy. Let me run this one more time. solenoids just snap. I mean, I've, I've been running this thing on battery for quite a while. I had the charger on it, and the charger, you see, just, just a hair, I mean, it only takes a little bit, and they work. And once they're up, they pretty much want to stay there. I can probably adjust them a little tighter, <clears throat> but let me drop it one more time and call it a day for that. Uh, wanting to get out of here. I got down here again probably after noon and it's going on. It's going on five o'clock. So I've been down here about five hours working on this. But that's where I'm at. Um, again, them solenoid valves are about uh, three times the magnetic field as the old ones. So you've got our three greens power off. So everything inside is all back together. The only thing I got left to do is plug in one wire for the tail wheel because it's electric motor. I'm going to go ahead and close this up. I'm done in here. But the fuel tank's all back together. No fuel in it. It's all wired. It's all plumbed. I pulled the cowling off uh, you know to put the charger on there, charge the battery. So that's all good to go. And then when I started looking around in here before I put the cowling on, so it's all back on, pinned, bolted, and there's an aluminum block in, inside one of the coolant lines coming off of the top of the engine. The coolant line comes out, goes down in through the radiators, and then back to the motor. Well, I bought this block on eBay. What it does is allows you to just cut the hose, put this block in there, one inch fittings on it, and it has a hole drilled and tapped for three eighths quarter inch pipe thread. And then I was able to put my water temp sensor in there that works the gauge. Well, I was looking around and I looked under there and it was wet. There was a drop of antifreeze underneath the bottom of that. So that might be what was possibly leaking down the hose, working all the way down here, and it has a a drip down here every now and then. See, right now it's just damp, but it never leaves a puddle under the plane. Uh, so I'm hoping that's all it was, was that little leak. Otherwise, if this has to come out, you know, I have to cut all this out to pull that out. So but right now it's not leaking enough to cause any issues. I've got plenty of coolant, but everything under the cowling looks good. So this is Tuesday. Yesterday it was just rainy, muggy. Nasty the rain came cooled down today. It's been uh, pretty much sunny all day, but uh, a lot of planes flying in said it was it was really really gusty up there in the air. And it's pretty much right down the runway today, so been a nice day. But it is it is humid for this time of year. That's un, not normal, but we've had so much damn rain. It's incredible how much rain we've had. So um, I think that's about all I wanted to do. I'm gonna get this out of here. As you can see, when this thing's hanging in the air. Yeah, it's rocking and rolling. I got the other side out already. Right, I'm gonna let this down and take this jack off and boom. And then I will push it back up against the wall more. And remember to take that uh, tie strap off. I think I'm I'm done with it for now. I'll leave that on there in case I want to come back and just tweak on the store a little more. But next weekend, this coming weekend, I'm going to, I'm not sure what the weather's going to be like yet, but I'm going to get some fuel, bring it down in, put at least five gallons in it. So I can get out and run around and see how this all feels again now that the wheels are tight. Uh, the toe-in is, they're identical side to side right now. Um, the gear's working, as you see, working great. The problem with it sticking when it's up or sticking when it's down, not going up, not coming down, uh, those coils seem to have taken care of that problem. They were on clearance for like $26, and they're like $75 normal. So I think Summit sells them $75, $80. Bucks. But I was able to get two of them, and it only took three days to get them. I was really surprised at how fast it came from Holly. Holly owns nitrous oxide systems. They own a lot of systems now. All right, I think that's about everything I did. 
like again, like I said, most of the work I did the other day was rigging the gear. Get Oops, sorry, my thumb hit the record button. But uh, the other day, Saturday, I was here, like five hours, and I was just working on the toe and getting uh, getting everything squared again and readjusting all the micro switches. So that's all good to go. It's just that door's a little, just a little wonky there. It's uh, maybe a little tightening. We'll take care of that. The outside door is fine when it closes. The inside door was the one that was hitting. So um, again, just running, bouncing. Uh, Turbulence in the air will probably make those things slap shut anyway, but again these aren't going to be retracted right away once it's in the air for the first few flights, so I, And I finally did pull the tail cone tied the wires back up out of the way there So they're not dangling out the tail wheel anymore. I uh, just got to hook up one wire underneath the dash To get the tail wheels done and and that's it the gear the gear will work if you get it in the air So all right folks, I'm gonna go ahead and cut her off here and head for home Get this jack folded up. I'll leave it over here for now in case uh, when I come back if I want to uh, recheck that or something. But I'll have to bring the trailer down to get rid of this thing and take it home. Once I'm positive, I'm done. But at least i got, got to remember to take that uh, strap off that propeller. We don't want that thing in there when it starts. So, got to get that out of there. All right, that's going to do it for now, folks. I'll... Uh, Get this uploaded tonight so you guys got something to see and then this weekend i'm not sure which day saturday sunday monday Tuesday, whatever's going to be the best day to come down here if it's not raining windy or blowing like hell uh, get some gas in it and get her fired up see how it runs for the start of the season uh, the battery is never disconnected it was never uh, uh never went dead on me so the memory in the computer should be fine so the engine should should operate as normal so all right, folks, uh, again, appreciate you taking time to watch these videos and dropping by. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. Uh, if you've got a lot of questions, everything can be answered just by looking at my old videos. Just go to the channel and just start watching, folks. All right, uh, as always, feel free to leave any comments, questions, or concerns. I'll answer them as they come in. And, uh, again, appreciate you guys watching these, and we'll see you guys next weekend. So for now, this is Dino Done Out.